policy framework. This is just an excerpt of where the lands are situated under that plan. Within the Coburg official plan, this is just an excerpt again of the land use and transportation plan. The lands identified for the zoning bylaw amendment are situated within a employment area. And you'll notice that uh, one of the permitted uses within that uh, is in fact for a hotel, which is identified uh, and is permitted by the official plan. Under the zoning bylaw presently, the subject lands are zoned BP4, which is a business park exception zone. And what was articulated by uh, Madam Chair was that the initial application did contemplate uh, a number of modifications to the zoning. Um, there was actually a total of four, and one of which was to permit the use, another to deal with landscaping. And I, I will simply report to you that since the time of the applications, the landscaping has no longer a required uh, variance or relief being sought. We're, we're meeting the bylaw requirement for landscape uh, setbacks. The third element that was contemplated initially was a reduction in parking, as was mentioned. Um, that has also been uh, eliminated from the requested relief. So, in fact, we're meeting the, uh, the town's requirements for parking. And finally, there was a contemplation that some of the patios and um, the nature of the site plan configuration might have triggered an encroachment into a setback. And in fact, through some discussions with staff, uh, we understood that that was not required and did not trigger uh, any zoning relief. So I just wanted to be clear that the request uh, before you initially was for four elements, is now a single element. Uh, and that is strictly the uh, approval of a use being that of the hotel use. In all other respects, the proposal uh, it complies with the zoning bylaw. And I'll explain that a little bit more carefully in articulating to you this is a site plan uh, concept. And this concept, again, articulates the location. And if one was to orientate to the east, uh, or on the, call it the right-hand side of the site plan. Uh, this is the extension of De Palma Drive. So to orientate north, true north would be sort of um, to the left side of the, the slide, if you will. And uh, so we have the De Palma Drive extension taking place in this orientation. And we have a street that's intended to be a public street providing second means of uh, access. And ultimately, what you can see is the position of the hotel and the configuration of it and the site plan concept. Again, no, <coughs> the details of the site plan are subject to further review. But I wanted to show the, the members here that we've provided for the requisite minimum landscape strip along the road frontages at six meters. And we've provided for the uh, total parking supply uh, in accordance with the the town's bylaw requirements, and that provides for 103 spaces. And there are accessible spaces and loading spaces provided as well uh, in accordance with the bylaw. <clears throat> this just expresses a, uh, a very quick sort of cross section elevation view uh, of the proposal. It's four stories, and there are a total of, um, I believe it's uh, approximately. Uh, 80-odd, 80 uh, 82 suites, and about 5,060 square meters of floor area. And this is representative, again, of just sort of the uh, elevation view of the, um, the expression of the architecture, albeit that is subject to a future site plan application. I did want to just, in my closing uh, comments, um, I am here this evening to address any comments of members, uh, staff, and or members of the public. I would simply uh, wish to extend my thanks to staff for uh, the comprehensive work they've done in the reporting to the committee. And uh, again, uh, would appreciate the opportunity to answer any questions that, uh, that members have or the public. If there's additional uh, technical information that I can try to be of assistance to, as well as outlining any additional questions that might arise. But it's my view that the 
planning application here before you does have planning merit. Uh, it meets the <coughs> requisite policy instruments, including consistency with the provincial policy statements, conformity with the growth plan, um, and conformity with not only the Northumberland uh, official plan, but the, the town's official plan as well. And that's uh, carefully outlined in the planning report that I authored as well as in the staff report. Um, so with those remarks, I thank you for the opportunity to speak and here to answer any questions. Thank you very much for walking us through your application. Uh, open, the open the floor to any questions from members of council. Seeing none, thank you very much for your presentation. And moving along to our planning report from our manager of planning services, Mr. Franklin, dated October 29th, 2019, regarding the application for approval of a zoning bylaw amendment for the Department of Lands, Department of Development Limited, Lattes, Weston Consulting. Mr. Franklin. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, the planning report relies heavily upon our colleagues' information, uh, both their planning justification report along with their urban design and sustainability report that were attached as appendices uh, to my staff report. Um, there's also a number of other technical uh, reports that were submitted as part of the overall application that are available upon request, including a functional servicing brief, a functional stormwater management report, a transportation study, and a preliminary geotechnical investigation. These are fairly um, standard and technical type reports. Um, obviously, departments such as the county, uh, conservation authority, and our public works folks were very interested in, in those kind of more technical aspects. Um, but the specifics of policy um, were reviewed in the plan justification report that came with this application, and again, are attached as appendix one to this overall report. As my colleague had mentioned, um, although the original application asked for a number of potential modifications to the business park exception zone for this parcel, um, those questions have been addressed now through an amended um, concept site plan, which you see before you. It was attached as figure two in my report, as well as on the screen currently as part of uh, Mr. Computer's uh, presentation that council has available to it. Specifically, it is strictly just to add the hotel use to the overall suite of uses. No other changes are now needed to the business park for exception zone. Um, it would obviously be a new number uh, should council deem in favor of this application uh, and request staff to craft a bylaw to bring forward back to the council for approval. From an analysis perspective, there's a couple of key points I also wanted to highlight that's addressed in my report along within the planning justification report, specifically related to the provincial policy statement and a place to grow growth plan. These are the high level uh, municipal or excuse me, provincial policies that planning applications must address um, and specifically talks about a range and mix of employment, institutional recreation, parks and open space and other uses to meet long term needs. Those are specific goals that new applications must address. It's also reiterated in the county official plan and the town of Coburg official plan. So that was kind of one of the key points in terms of, of uh, amongst a whole host of other issues that we need to look at when we're going through any specific planning report or request for amendments to planning applications. The other key point that my colleague made as well was this application is specifically to address an already granted use in the official plan. This was dealt with through official plan amendment 69 a year ago, approved at the Landing Local Plan Appeal Tribunal for this property as part of a negotiated settlement for the overall De Palma land holdings. And it's specifically to add hotel use amongst the other uses in the official plan, but only is asking for the hotel use for this portion of the overall land holdings at this time. Obviously, we currently expect in the future to be dealing with other uh, zoning bylaw changes for other portions of the property or to the overall property in the future to deal with other components such as adding retail and such to it. But this current application, now that they've got a, a tenant uh, specifically identified, and as you can see from the elevation plans, um, conceptually it shows as a, a 
uh, Holiday Inn Express um, for the hotel end user. I don't want to go through line by line, obviously, in, in my overall report, um, other than to identify that I, I generally do concur with uh, um, the information presented by Western Consulting as part of their application. Again, this amended application narrows down that focus to just adding the, the use to a portion of the overall land holdings that was recently suffered uh, this past February to uh, separate this 0.75 uh, hectare parcel generally to the southwest of the Home Depot lands. It will involve the um, extension of De Palma Drive along what would be its frontage uh, on this particular drawing would be on the right hand side of the uh, of the drawing down to a cul-de-sac for snow clearing and fire access. In the future we also expect a future plan of subdivision to come forward to further split the lands and add in additional roads public or private at this point that's still being discussed uh, through concepts as, as other tenants come along to this large land holding on the west side of Coburg being in addition for uh, business and employment needs. Specifically to tie into the goals of the um, provincial policies that identify intensifying development in an urban, serviced, and built up area of the municipality, contributing to the municipality's employment job growth targets for the town of Coburg. That this project is proposed in a compact development form, which will integrate well into the existing urban fabric and adjacent development in a compatible fashion. It establishes a street connection to the Palma Drive, which will open future access to the west and improve pedestrian connections to and from this neighborhood. And the addition of a hotel to the list of land uses available to the site complies with the Town of Coburg approved official plan. With that, Madam Chair, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Franklin, for that summary. Opening the floor to questions from members of council. My apologies. Seeing none, moving on. Oh, my apologies, Your Worship. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to uh, Mr. Franklin. Just my curiosity, it uh, indicated uh, one of the highlights of future Street A. Uh, could you just define for me what's meant by future? Through you, Madam Chair, to His Worship Mayor. Uh, in this case, it would be along the bottom side of the page. Uh, the initial application actually doesn't require that the, that the second driveway to be opened up. Um, we'll see when they get to site plan whether or not there'll be a private road as an interim measure. What would be along the bottom side, um, basically along what would be the west side of the property here in this particular image, just because of its orientation, would be the bottom side of of that page, which would run north south along the edge. At this point, we're currently contemplating just an extension to Palma Drive um, east-west across what would be the south face of this property to a cul-de-sac, obviously depending on issues around uh, site access, fire protection, those kinds of important matters. That will be determined uh, at site plan whether or not that additional road is needed at this point or as part of a future application. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the other one I want to inquire about, just for clarity purposes, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, I have to find the... Um, it talks about, uh, when I read, an interim stormwater management solution can be utilized and indicated that uh, that would meet all our standards. Uh, but it indicates it could be utilized until full build-out of property. So could you tell me, not so much of the interim, I understand that piece, but I'm concerned about when we proceed to the future, what does that mean for the town of Coburg? Through you, Madam Chair. In this case, I, um, 
I'll get to a bigger picture here, actually. Um, when the Cobra West Secondary Plan was originally approved back in um, 2000, 2001, it identified, um, obviously, the existing large stormwater facility on Burnham Street, just north of the county lands in behind what was Children's Aid, I forget what it's currently called, I apologize for that, uh, is where the large stormwater management facility is now. That takes certain lands drained to the east. A number of the lands in the west business area, including the Home Depot lands, and these lands actually drain west to the creeks that feed into the Cars Marsh system, rather than east to the Coburg Creek system. Again, I'll wear my old Ganaraska uh, Conservation Authority hat here for a moment. The interim solution is to put in a stormwater management facility which will address this parcel of land. Obviously, there needs to be a larger solution that will address all of these westlands, including the Home Depot. Its current stormwater management facility is also an interim facility. It ties in in that southeast corner of the lands and drains east to the large stormwater management pond. That was determined to be an interim. We'd actually like to see a, a restaurant or, or business in that, that front location in front of Home Depot and not a stormwater management pond. And it would then drain west along De Palma Drive into a new facility that, again, will be part of that larger plan of subdivision to allow for servicing roads and various other services, and quite importantly, stormwater management. Currently, the County of Northumberland is going through a master drainage plan for the west side of Coburg, jointly with Hamilton Township and the county because of roadside issues along the ditches along County Road 2 and try to come up with solutions of how this area can drain across municipal boundaries working with the Conservation Authority in that longer term facility. And whether it drains west or south and then west is a fairly important decision that will have to be sought um, in the fullness of time. Currently that's still under discussion and as identified we're looking at an interim solution to deal with the hotel while those other decisions are still being investigated and a recommendation to come back to the county and eventually Cobra Council to understand what might need to happen there, or again, as part of the future plan of subdivision, as that block of land will likely be on this overall large parcel, but not part of this 0.75 hectare portion where the hotel is to go. Sorry to be so lengthy. No, that's important information. Thank you very much. Any additional questions? Excellent. Thank you. Oh, my apologies. Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Franklin, I just wanted you to explain um, to Council and the public, I'm looking at the map from the Coburg Official Plan where you've got hotel lands and you clearly identify permitted uses and what's in, what can be done there. <clears throat> and then I, I see the zoning bylaw and it pretty much looks like the same area but is to be changed to business park. Um, can you tell me what is um, zoned um, to be included in business park, especially the BP4, which, are, uh, which is before us this evening? The difference between the two, they look approximately the same area, but we've got an official plan saying one thing and a zoning bylaw saying something else. Through you, Madam Chair, to the Deputy Mayor, I'll just try to slide back to that, that particular image. So that's the official plan. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's, two, there's two red boxes on this particular image, both of the 0.75 hectare parcel that's in question today, along with an overall larger red box, which is the overall lands that we refer to as the De Palma lands, with a special policy star on them. In the official plan, there's very specific policies and a lengthy list of potential uses um, that the Western Report actually identifies here in its list of overall uses that could apply to the overall land holding. At this point, the applicant is only looking for this small portion, which is why on the zoning map, rather than change DP4 in its entirety, they're looking to change this portion of the land from Business Park 4 to Business Park 9 or 10, whatever the next available number is, which would include that hotel use as that interim because they have a, a tenant, they have a, a concept which works for this parcel without just generally adding it to, in an unknown 
uh, um, situation to that larger land holding, that, that uh, uh, large parcel. Deputy Mayor? Um, can you uh, um, identify then what uh, uses are um, accepted in the business park areas? I, I, I can see from the diagram that most of it is BP4. Um, and you want to, um, I just, uh, it just seems a little confusing um, to the public, and I just wanted to know if you could do that, please. What the uses, um, just a few of them, and why hotels would not be a part of that. I thought I had a copy of the Business Park 4 here with me, but in, in general, the Business Park 4 zone um, is typically for uh, light industrial in a covered building, research and development, office, institutional, um, I'm trying to think of the other, other uses are offhand, but within that suite of about a dozen uses, do not specifically identify hotel, motel, or convention center. When the official plan was done, it added that list to that list for this parcel, um, mostly because employment lands elsewhere in Coburg do permit a, a hotel or motel to be located on them. So whether that be Lucas Point or whether that be over at Northam. Um, if someone privately owns some of those lands, uh, other than the home of the town currently, they could put in a hotel on those lands. Um, so the Coburg West Business District secondary plan did not have that use in it. And through the official plan changes with OPA 69 that was approved at the local planning area, the old OMB, uh, LPAT now, that was approved in 2018. So this particular application is just to add hotel, not to get into the other list of uses such as retail or uh, um, building supply or those other kinds of uses that are approved in the official plan because we don't have a specific location, we don't have a servicing solution, we don't have transportation plans at this point for other portions of these lands. We do have all of those technical matters understood conceptually for the smaller portion for hotel. Thank you again, Mr. Franklin, for that level of detail. Any final call for questions, points of clarification? Okay. Seeing none, moving along to um, Section 6, the Municipal Advisory Committee comments. Uh, to you, Mr. Lummer. Committee Chair, Member of Council. Uh, member of this memo from the Secretary of the Cobra Planning Development Advisory Committee dated October 29th, 2019. This is regarding a motion of endorsement from the Planning and Development Advisory Committee for the approval of the zoning bylaw amendment to Palma Lands, to Palma Developments Limited, Weston Consulting. Thank you, Mr. Larmer. Moving on to public submissions. So just a brief overview for those in attendance. Um, the procedure will be we will invite those um, in the gallery to make a public submission in support of the application, followed by public submissions in opposition. Uh, a referral to the municipal clerk for any additional comments or submissions received by the public at the printing of the agenda. To the manager of planning services for any additional written submissions. And then we can open it back up to the applicant if there's any additional comments or questions you want to address through public submissions. If, when you do come up to address council, I'll kindly ask you to sign the form, a uh, sign in sheet, as well as um, state your name and your address in the town of Coburg. So with that um, procedural summary, I'll begin with inviting any members of the gallery to come forward for public submissions in support of the application. Seeing none, moving on to public submissions in opposition for the application. Seeing none, to the municipal clerk for any additional written comments or submissions received at the printing of the agenda. Madam Chair, uh, on printing of the agenda as well as today, the, the, the town clerk's office has not received any comments or submissions via email or through mail or handwritten. Thank you, Mr. Larmer. On to the, uh, back to Mr. Franklin. Uh, any written submissions received from commenting agencies at this time? Thank you, Madam Chair. There was one public submission received at the start of the application process, um, specifically asking why a new application could not meet its parking requirements. That application obviously now has been amended through a revised concept site plan that this application does have 103 of the 102 required parking spaces, not the 95 as was previously identified. Um, that uh, 
homeowner here in Coburg has been identified of that change, as well as a copy of my report in case they had further questions. I have not heard back from them. We've received comments from Ministry of Transportation, uh, the Canada Conservation Authority, and Northumberland County, all identifying no objections with a list of some different concepts, or excuse me, different requests for um, should this proposed project move forward to be dealt with at site plan. Uh, they're more technical in nature, mostly regarding the stormwater management. Obviously, that's a concern for MTO and GRCA, along with traffic volume loading uh, identified by MTO and Northumberland County, just to ensure it's because of its close location to Burnham Street and the 401. Okay, that's all that comes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Franklin. Um, any additional responses from? No, yes, yep. No, we're good. This is good. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, any additional comments from council? Okay. Seeing none, just um, for further notice, all persons requiring notice of passage of this proposed zoning bylaw amendment are to advise municipal clerk of their name and address to ensure receipt of notice. Thank you for coming up this evening. Uh, call for adjournment.